And then we've got the information for review down below. So now we've pulled in our banking information and notice again, all we have for the banking information is similar to what you would expect on a bank statement. You got the date, you got the description, you've got the category and you've got whether it was an increase or decrease. That's it. What are we missing? We're crucially missing the account that we need to apply it to. And we should be adding from the memo if we can the customers and the vendors to pull it into the actual financial transactions. So you can see that the financial transactions are not being made yet. Let's just clarify that or double check that or make that more concrete by right clicking the tab up top, duplicating it. And I'm just going to open the major financial statement reports, the balance sheet and the income statement going down to the reports on the left hand side. And we're going to open up the balance sheet, one of the major financial statements. And I'm going to go from 010123 to 022823 and run it. And so they put in, the, again, they put in this amount as the beginning balance of the checking account. But that's all we have. We don't have any income statement amounts. If I right click and duplicate it again and take a look at the income statement by going to the reports at the left hand side, and then I go into the profit and loss report. There's nothing on the income statement. If I run this from 010122 to 022822, let's do, let's do to uh, 123122. So this is the year that I, I entered the data in. There's nothing in it for that, for that year. And if I go onto the balance sheet, all we have is this 36. Let's run it for the date 010122 to 123122, run it. And let's see what they did to put that 36 in there in the checking account. And they put the opening balance in place, right? So even though I could have, so they, I think they, they pulled this from the opening balance of the, of the uh, checking account that I pulled in because I told it to put zero in the opening balance. And I think it still pulled this in basically from the balance that was coming from the data file. So you gotta be a little bit you know, careful of that when you first set up the bank feeds to see what's it gonna do with this opening balance. And you'll be able to see that more clearly when you do the bank reconciliation. Because remember what the, there's a difference between, there's two ways like software can, can show you this information and connect to your financial institutions. If you have financial software, like a, like a uh, I think Personal Capital has one, or uh, Quicken might do this versus QuickBooks, where they can actually pull in the data from the financial institutions, like your checking accounts, your savings accounts, and your, your, your investment accounts, like in stocks and bonds, and give you a balance sheet based on the end result on the, that is there at that point in time. That's not what QuickBooks does, however. QuickBooks pulls in the information, because if, if you pull in just the ending balance, you get a nice snapshot balance sheet, but you don't get the income statement. You don't get the activity reports. So what you want here, on the checking account is to pull in the activity. Now the problem of pulling in the activity for any range of time, if it's the first account that you've ever connected to, is that you have that beginning balance before the range of time. And you have to account for how are you going to deal with that beginning balance. You possibly you're gonna, you're just gonna, uh, you know, journal entry the beginning balance or something like that to start at some specific point. Possibly you had an accounting system prior to using QuickBooks and you wanna start from the end of the last accounting system and then go forward from the current accounting system. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, if, if something is wrong with this beginning balance, then we'll see that when we do the bank reconciliation, because then, then we'll see a difference, a discrepancy. So that first bank reconciliation is often necessary. You still want to do the bank reconciliation, even if you're constructing your books from the bank feeds. And uh, it usually has like that quirk, that problem of reconciling the first time and then the bank recs will be quite easy from that point forward. So we might have to go in and make an adjustment to this, but we're gonna we're gonna keep that here for now. Look what QuickBooks did to the other side. They dumped it into opening balance equity. You'll recall that when we cleared out the bank, the the, the general ledger accounts, that the opening balance equity was one that I said we couldn't delete most likely because QuickBooks used it to force the transactions to be in balance when you're trying to enter something that doesn't have two sides to it, doesn't have the double entry system to it. So they forced the transaction to opening balance equity. It shouldn't be there. The QuickBooks is basically telling us, hey, this is a made up account. We didn't know where to put it. That's where we put it because we didn't know where to put it. Probably it should be somewhere in equity. 
if it's a sole proprietor, probably it should be in like owner's equity. So we can always do a journal entry, which we'll do later, 